Hey everyone, it's Aaron from God a Minute. This is a live stream on February the 8th. It's 12 o'clock p.m. approximately EST my time. This has been an, a thing that has just escalated and grown and it's really fun. Here is a map of the U.S. And we're going to talk about all these pins and so many things to share. This is really exciting for me. I'm pretty excited about this. And uh, before we get talking about all these things, we're going to get to it. Uh, just to remind you, this got a minute YouTube channel. It, it's turned into this. It's turned into a massive ministry. It's a, It's really fun to be a part of it. Of course, I'm the guy operating the channel. But man, do we have some incredible people operating behind the scenes now? Um, so, if you want to join the ministry and you want to join uh, and for praying for people in the comment section, let me know. If you want to join the Discord, there are so many ways you can serve in there. We've got a teen program now. We've got women's ministry. We've got uh, a bunch of studies. We've got Brother Rick doing studies. We've got testimony nights. We've got communion nights. We've got such a, uh, a massive ministry in the Discord now. And uh, the whole thing has grown into something that I just never knew was going to grow into. I just uh, have the attitude of, yes, Lord, uh, use me and... It's just really good, cool to see the body of Christ come together. So it's more than just a channel to me. It's a it's a platform where a community can can voice what they've got to share. And uh, and so thank you for all the people that have wrote in comments and uh, you know shared with extra spots of of what's on this map. And also thank you for all the people that give to this ministry. All the links are in my description box. And if you'd like to support myself in this ministry, then uh, there's lots of options there. I do this full time for the benefit of uh, the body of Christ. And uh, I just love it. And I love you guys very much. And um, we're going to put, or I'm, I'm going to try my best to, I've got about 125 points to say. I've got 80, uh, I titled this 80 pins, but actually there's nine, 90 pins since I put, made that thumbnail. So there's a lot of things to share. And there's, like I said, there's about 125 things I'm going to say in this video. I'm going to jam it in as quickly as I can. So I'm going to go kind of fast through this video. I'm going to review some things because people, uh, there's two things. People don't watch every video and people have, if you're like me, you got a bad memory. So um, I'm just going to say everything kind of quickly and short. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on my 125 points. So buckle up, get a coffee, get a snack and expect to go fast. After this live stream, I, you know, I'm sure there'll be more pins. And of course, if you've got extra pins to share with me and points, please leave it in the comment section. Um, but after this, I feel like we're going to get into some biblical stories, biblical narratives to support what we're seeing here. There's a lot of fun connections here. And um, guys, I'm, I'm waiting for the rapture. I don't know when it is. I don't know if it's before or during or after this eclipse, but this no doubt must be a sign from, from God, from our father in heaven. Uh, if you're concerned about looking at the sun, moon, and stars, read Genesis 1.14, read Luke 21, verse 25, and read Psalm 19, uh, among many other verses. But God made the sun, moon, and stars for signs and seasons. And so here we are looking at what looks to be the sign of the Aleph Tav. And uh, so we'll get into it here. I am in the kitchen. I was hoping that this lighting would be really good. It's kind of bright in here, so I'll move it up and down again to help with blurriness. So... I'm going to review my points again from point one and go through it all. And uh, we've got all the way up to point 90 here. Okay. So, all right, we're going to go fast, but not too fast. So, so if I'm going too fast, just pause the video once it's all uploaded and everything and, um, and we'll get to it. Okay. So here's, here it is from point one. We have a Salem, Oregon. Salem is short form for Jerusalem. Salem meaning peace. I'll, I'll keep on adjusting this in hopes that it'll help with the blurriness. And uh, that should be okay. Yeah, Salem, Oregon. And then we got Salem, Idaho, short form Jerusalem. We know that the new Jerusalem is coming, and this was the 2017 eclipse. Okay. Salem, Wyoming. And then we've got uh, Salem, Nebraska. Okay. Right over here. And then we've got Salem, Missouri, right over here. And uh, oh, what I've done also on this map is I've I've drawn this dotted line. This is a new thing. So everything within this dotted line is people. Are, if you're standing in this area, you're going to see at least ninety percent or better. 
of this eclipse. So really this eclipse goes over the, the thickness, like it's really this thick line right here of, of the eclipse path. So all these pins are pretty much 90% or better in, in this eclipse path. So that really helps out with all the pins I've put before. Okay, so point number six, Salem, Kentucky. Over over in this, I'm calling this a flower bouquet. You know, the Bride of Christ and all that kind of stuff, right? The flower bouquet, look at all those colors. I was hoping that this would be a little bit uh, clearer because of the lighting. Maybe I can open up the blinds and see if that's gonna help. One second. Do we like the brightness or is that doesn't really help, does it? That's too shady. Okay, I'll, I'll put it, I'll, I'll close the blinds. All right, I thought the lighting would help, but that's okay. All right, let's go to point number seven. It's uh, Salem in South Carolina. Okay, and then point number eight, we've got uh, Nineveh in Missouri. And so there's your Nineveh. And we mentioned this on the other videos, so you can check out my last live stream. But yeah, Nineveh, Missouri. And then we have point number nine, Nineveh, Texas. And that's the story of Jonah. So Nineveh, Texas, it's in there. And point number 10, we've got Nineveh, Indiana. That's in the, the flower bouquet. Jonah went to Nineveh to said, hey, guys, repent. Judgment is coming. It's believed that there was an eclipse at the time of Jonah that um, had them say, hey, repent, repent. And they did. But um, we know that judgment is coming on this world. Nineveh Township, Ohio, in that zone, that's number 10. Point number, that's where that was uh, number 11. Point number 12, Nineveh, Pennsylvania. It's in that area right in, in the 90% or higher. Point number 13, Nineveh, New York. Nineveh, New York. This Again, this, this echoes the Jonah story. Perfect. Point number 14, Nineveh, Nova Scotia, over there in the blue, the, right at the end. I didn't actually have Nova Scotia, but that's one of the last places. Point number 15, this is a big one. We have little Egypt right in the center of it, right in the southern Illinois area. So uh, that's incredible right there. Most people know that by now. Point number 16, there's an alpha in Kentucky. And point number 17, Omega, Illinois. And that's all in there. That's all in the in the in what I'm calling the flower bouquet. The alpha and the omega, right in the Little Egypt area. Really exciting stuff. Number 19, Kerrville, Texas is where the coming... Uh, the Coming King Sculpture Prayer Gardens are. Oops, where am I going here? Well, what's going on here? Sorry about that. And that's, I drew a little cross there because that's where the 77 foot and seven inch cross, the empty cross is, where the conjunction was. Isn't that perfect? And so that's that. And then also, I think I'll say this again, but there's another cross, Bald Knobs Cross in that area. So we'll talk about that as we go. I got lots of points to share. I'm kind of I'm going kind of quickly because you guys, most of you have heard this before, but I just I also want to catch up the new guy. So so again, there's there's three eclipses, 2017, 2023, 2024 eclipses that make the elephant the top symbol. Okay, so that was point number 19. Point number 20. Uh reminder, the new merged fault is right in this area. I wish this was more clear. How come it's not getting clear like it was before? But anyway, the, the New Madrid fault line is in that area. I guess that's better right there. And uh, let me see if I can adjust my camera so that the focus is just like automatic resolution. Hmm. Let's see here. I'll just keep on adjusting. I don't know how to change that. Okay. Anyway, the Madrid fault line is in this area where if there's an earthquake, that would be bad news. Bad, bad news if there was a massive earthquake here. And there was uh, an eclipse pattern similar to this in the early 1800s. And then there was this massive earthquake. 
So here we are having a similar eclipse pattern to the early 1800s. Will there be a massive earthquake? Uh, I don't know. Point number 21, we have the Ark Encounter in Williamston, Kentucky. Williamston, Kentucky in this area. Yeah. Point number 22, we have Cairo, Cairo, Illinois, Little Egypt, related to the city of in Egypt, Cairo. Point number 23, we have Mount Carmel in Illinois. And we can refer to 1 Kings 18, where Elijah was in battle with Baal and their gods, and 450 of them were in a big battle. So we got Mount Carmel. Point number 24, we've got a Jonah in Texas. We have a Jonah in Texas just before the town's called Nineveh. So this last uh, eclipse comes in from this angle. 2024 hits Jonah, and then we got we got all these places called Nineveh. Isn't that awesome? Point number 25, we have a place called Corpus Christi down here. And that is another way to say body of Christ. And that's where that other eclipse went out of in 2023. Point number 26, we got Devil's Stand Table in Illinois. And uh, that's in that area. And point number 27, we got a Devil's Punch Bowl in Ontario, right around that green dot right there, right around here. Point number 28, we have a Salem, Arkansas, and that is in this area, oops, right in this area, and we have a Salem, Indiana, right around the flower bouquet, we got a Salem, Tennessee, in the flower bouquet, we got a Salem, Maine, again, Salem being short form for Jerusalem, right in the path there, up at the top. That's good. Number 32, we got a Faro Lake in New York. That blue dot, Faro Lake. Isn't that incredible? Faro Lake after Little Egypt. Perfect. We have uh, Rapture Harmony, Indiana, right in the flower bouquet. And uh, somebody mentioned on uh, the comment section, was it Mike? Uh, man, who was it? I think, uh, anyway, he had said that this is really the only place with rapture in the in the world i don't know i don't know if that was true or not but he just um said it was very special this place is called rapture harmony indiana and uh it was either him or somebody else in the comment section they said that they did some research and i think it, they said it that this place was named that because people thought the rapture was going to happen a, a couple hundred years ago and that's why they called it rapture harmony indiana and so that isn't that interesting if that's the true story i'm not quite sure if that is but that might actually be the case. Um, but yeah, it's right in the right in the flower bouquet, Rapture Harmony, Indiana. That's amazing. Okay, verse, I mean, not verse, <laughs> point number 34, Jerusalem, Arkansas. There's a Jerusalem in Arkansas. And uh, yeah, just below the flower bouquet, there's a Jerusalem, Ohio. That's amazing. There's a Jerusalem, Cincinnati, Ohio. That's in the flower bouquet. We have a Salem, Utah. Right over here, Salem, Utah, over there. We have Eagle Pass, Texas, where all that action's happening right at the entrance. And uh, we know that Nebuchadnezzar was turned into a what looked to be like an ox and oxen and a eagle kind of combined together. And the uh, the symbol for the states is an eagle. We'll get into that later on. Um, number forty. Elijah, Missouri. We have an Elijah in a Missouri. And there was Elijah and Elisha. And there's that whole story as well. Elijah was taken up in a in a chariot. And uh, number 41, we've got Gord, Arkansas. The interesting thing about Gord is um, Jonah. Well, in the in the King James Version, you'll see you'll see that God gave him a gourd plant. In other versions, they won't say gourd, it'll say a tree or a plant or anything to, to give Jonah shade when he was waiting to see what the, the judgment would be on um, on Nineveh. So he was given a gourd. Well, there's a gourd, Arkansas. So so what we have is we got a we got a Jonah, we got a gourd, we got a bunch of Nineveh, and I, my point that I'll say later, I'll say it now since it's on my mind. There's a place called Jopa, Texas. So in the story of Jonah, 
he goes to Joppa first before going to Tar Tarshish. So the whole story of Jonah is is really in here. We got Jonah and Joppa and a gourd plant and Nineveh. Like the, that whole story is is really playing out in the names of the city. So we'll get into that maybe a little later. Point number 42. We have an Israel township in Ohio. Isn't that perfect? Israel township in Ohio. Okay, number 43. Christina emailed me. She said that she had some moon dreams. Uh, she said that she had dreams of four moons. And, uh, well, there's seven cities with the name moon in the U.S., according to my understanding. But four of them are are in this in this pathway. So four of them are in their pathway. And she thought it was exciting because she had dreams of four moons in particular. So thank you for that that note. And I just noted that the ones in this pathway are Moon Oklahoma, Moon Mississippi, Moon Kentucky, and Moon Pennsylvania. So that is interesting, the four moons. And of course, the only reason why this all happens is because the moon blocks the sunlight. So that's neat. Point number 48, Salem, Oklahoma. Salem, Oklahoma. That's it's probably that one or that one, one of those two. Not quite sure which one it is. And um, that's interesting. We have a place called America, Illinois. That's number uh, 49. And does that mean judgment on America being that it's in the flower bouquet? Yeah, I think so. I think this is a sign of judgment. We have uh, Salem, Ohio. That is over yonder in the Ohio area. And we have a devil's punch bowl in Oregon. I believe that's the devil's punch bowl in Oregon right at the entrance of it all. Yeah, pretty nuts. We have a Damascus in Ohio. We most, Many of us that are watching are familiar with Isaiah 17, talking about the destruction of Damascus. So we have a Damascus in Ohio, right in the path. We have point fifty three. We have a Bride, Tennessee. Bride, Tennessee. Well, that fits real nice. You know, Bride holding the bouquet, Tennessee. Man, I thought this was going to be clear. This is kind of blurry. There we go. Bride, Tennessee. All right. Then we've got, here's a fun one. Number 54, we have Lampstand, Utah. Lampstand, Utah. Well, we know that in uh, Revelation chapter 1, the churches are described as the lampstands. So that was in 2023. Interesting stuff. We have... Point number 55, we have Pisces Island in Ontario. Pisces Island in Ontario. It's probably that dark one on the top. Um, but uh, the interesting thing about that is the eclipse is in Pisces. It is in Pisces in the, in the star constellations, which I showed in my last live stream. So I don't think I'll open up my Stellarium on this video. don't think it's needed. But it is in Pisces. It is it is in that first fish. And a brother, Matt, who talked to me about the eclipse, he had mentioned that if you flip over the Lake Ontario, kind of like upside down, the, the, the shape of the lakes, which you can't really see in this video, it looks like Cetus with the two fish above it. So I'll have to maybe in the future share that picture that he shared with me. But essentially, is if, if you flip this upside down, it looks like Cetus and the two fish and anyway, this is called this is called Pisces. This is called Pisces Island, which is so interesting. Um, but we'll move on here. Number fifty six. We have Bride Island, Maine. We have Bride Island in Maine. Again, thank you for all the people commenting and leaving these in the comment section. That's in Maine at the end of the path. There, we have Carmel, Indiana. Like we said before, Mount Carmel is where Elijah battled with the, the brides. And not the brights, <laughs> the, the the prophets of Baal. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm going fast here. Number 58, we have Judah, Indiana. Judah, Indiana. And uh, Jesus comes from the lion. He's a, he is a lion of Judah. He is from the tribe of Judah. And uh, yeah, Indiana. Judah, Indiana. 
Revelation 5.5 5 is the reference for that. He opens his seals. Point 59, we have a Noah, Tennessee. Perfect. We got a Noah, Tennessee, and we have an ark encounter in Kentucky. So Noah got a seven-day warning. He hopped on the boat. He avoided the flood. We have a Noah and an ark encounter. So we got a we got a Jonah. We got the Jonah story we can study with this. We got the Noah study we can study with this. It's great. We got the the Exodus story we can study with this. It's perfect. We've got um Patmos, Arkansas. Patmos, Arkansas. And we know that John wrote his vision on the island of Patmos. His vision of the book of Revelation on Patmos. So there's that. So cool. And uh, a special shout out to, I mean, there's a lot of people that wrote comments that helped me with these pins, but a special shout out to username J A Y E D Y L C 6045. This person probably gave me like 20 pins in the comment section of my live stream. So uh, that we put on here. So, but there's lots of help and lots of people pointing in different directions. But this particular person really, did a lot there so thank you but thank you body of christ in general of course guys you can share this video and share anything you want I, it's all good it's all for the body of christ okay here's my other points now that um are just also very interesting we have a patmos ohio so this is point number 61 just like i said there was a patmos arkansas there is a patmos in ohio there is um, number 62. We have a Heaven Hill in South Carolina in the path of 2017. Point number 63. We have Paradise, Newfoundland. Para Paradise, Newfoundland. And that would be over there by one of those last ones at the, at the top. But you remember when Jesus was talking to the two thieves on the cross beside him? He says to the good, the good guy, well, the good guy that repented and said, hey, Jesus, will you remember me? And Jesus said, hey, I'll see you in paradise. You'll be with me in paradise. That's The reference for that would be Luke um, 23, verse 43, in and around that area. Uh, so we have a paradise, Newfoundland. And so moving on to point number 64, we have Babylon Hill in Pennsylvania. Babylon is gonna fall. I don't know if you guys know that, but it's a band called New World Sun. They got a pretty cool song from a long time ago. I don't know what it's called, probably Babylon, but the band's called New World Sun. Anyway, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. Revelation 17, 18. Um, anyway, we'll move on. Point number 65, St. Thomas, Ontario. Thomas was the doubter. And so there's St. Thomas. I believe it's that orange one. Probably that orange one, St. Thomas, Ontario. Point number 66. This is an obvious one that I missed from my other ones. This is one I should have had a while ago, but this is Roswell, New Mexico. This is where they had the UFO stuff going on in Roswell, New Mexico. Well, that lines up with the 2023 eclipse. Uh, I think it's pretty fair to say this UFO thing is going to be the, the the strong delusion. It's I mean, how else are they going to explain it away? That would be the way they would do it. So it just so happens that it, uh, it's, it's in conjunction with the 2023, that one in October, 2023. Okay, so number 67 point is Esther, Missouri. We have an Esther, Missouri, and that's incredible. So now we got we got so many biblical character uh, stories in here. I'm going to do this. Maybe it'll just be better if I do this. Just so blurry. I thought it was going to be better. Um, I guess that's not bad. Yeah, there's an Esther, Missouri. Amazing. Okay, so now we have, where are we now? Let me go back to my chart. Point number 68. We have Bald Knob Cross at of Peace in Illinois. We have a Bald Knob Cross in Illinois. So picture this, guys. There's a massive cross. There's a massive cross right here. Okay, and there's a massive cross right here, like literally a massive cross 
here and a massive cross here. And so picture this. If you're standing over here and you're looking at this whole shape and you're looking at Jesus here at the top of the Aleph, because Jesus is the head, he is the ox. Well, right behind him are the two massive are two massive crosses in the US. Isn't that interesting? So, like if you're again, if you're kind of like look at this in at this angle, you know, if you're to look at it like this angle, you know, can't really do that that great right now, but here, let me just do this. If you're to look at it like from this angle, you would see Jesus here and and then the two crosses behind him. That that's how the U.S. has it, you know. It's like it's pretty interesting how you would see two massive crosses in a three-dimensional way if Jesus was right here at the beginning. So hopefully that makes sense. What I'm trying to say. That's how it would have looked at the cross. There was two thieves behind them. So I don't know. Just just an observation on that. So we'll continue on here. There we go. Okay, what are we at now? Point number... Point number... I think it's point number 69 now there is. I didn't write them all out. There are 18 Bethlehems in general in the United States that that I noticed. Um, but I just want to acknowledge that there's one in Indiana. A bunch of Bethlehems. So... Um, yeah, that's, that's very interesting. Very interesting stuff. All right. So then we have Mount Moriah in Nevada. That is a very significant um, mountain as well. So Mount uh, Moriah in Nevada. Oh, it looks like I didn't put a pin there. So I'll have to do that later. But it's in Nevada somewhere. Didn't put a pin. Prob it's probably in the path if I wrote it down, but it's probably in there somewhere. Okay, Sodom, Ohio. Sodom, Ohio. It's in it's in the Ohio zone. Wow, Sodom, Ohio. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Luke seventeen it talks about Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, we, I, like I said earlier, there was a Noah, and there's a Sodom in Ohio. So isn't that fun? All right. So point number seventy two. Joshua, Texas. There's a Joshua, Texas. There's a Joshua, Texas. It's one of those gray ones I ran out of color. It's one of those light silver ones at the bottom there. Joshua, Texas, beside Jonah, Texas. And Joshua brought them to Jericho. And they walked around Jericho seven times. Well, I'll tell you later on, there's a Jericho in the path too. It's perfect. Okay, so that was point number 72. We got a Joshua, Texas. And, uh, you know, he was one of the spies that gave a good report. And anyway, moving on, number 73, Aaron. Aaron, Kentucky. There's an Aaron, Kentucky. Hey, my name's Aaron, but don't worry about me. Aaron and Moses were the two dudes getting them out of Egypt. Well, there's an Aaron, Kentucky. Well, see that? The plot thickens. The characters are, are in the story here. So Aaron, the mouthpiece of Moses. Went to Egypt. Hey, Pharaoh, let my people go. So we got an Aaron in Kentucky. We got a Pharaoh Lake in New York. We got a little Egypt in the southern Illinois area. All these biblical stories are just kind of jumping off the page, really. It's really interesting. Point number 74, we have an Ephesus in Tennessee. We have an Ephesus in Tennessee. Ephesus was the first church mentioned, and that's the, first, the church that it says, hey, you, you've left your first love. Repent. If you've left your first love, repent. So uh, we can, again, we can get into some biblical teachings after this, but Ephesus, Tennessee is one of the churches in the book of Revelation, specifically chapter 2, verse 1. Isn't that interesting? Right in the area that looks to be the massive judgment spot. So that's neat. Point number 75, we got Smyrna. Arkansas, again, same kind of thing. One of the churches in the book of Revelation. What seems to be in the general judgment zone. Point number 76, we have a Smyrna in Tennessee. Point number 77, we have a Smyrna in Indiana, right in the hot spot. Isn't that interesting? One of the churches in the book of Revelation. Number 78, 
near the end of the whole journey, we have um, the church of Philadelphia. We have literally the city of Philadelphia. And again, I ran out of colorful pins. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But the church of Philadelphia is the one that has said, hey, you'll, you'll be kept from the hour of trial. Isn't that interesting? Just, just outside of the line of 90%. <laughs> um, you can maybe even say 90%. They'll see 90%. But isn't that interesting that Philadelphia is near the end of the road of this eclipse? Uh, church of Philadelphia, the church of brotherly love. But that's another study, right? I'm just kind of dropping this these facts as quick as I can. And then uh, we'll get into some other deeper studies, I think, as we go here. Lots of things to talk about. Sardis, Kentucky. Sardis is another church referred to uh, Revelation 3, verse 1. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that is the church that it's if you if you do not watch, you will not know what hour I come upon you. I'm pretty sure that is the reference to that church. But again, we can get into some studies later on. Uh, okay, number 80. We have a creation museum in northern Kentucky. Creation museum in northern Kentucky. So pretty much in that flower bouquet zone. Creation museum. Perfect. Point number 81, we have a Jopa, Texas, which I mentioned to you that if you refer to Jonah chapter 1, verse 3, you'll, you'll see that Jonah went, he was heading to Tarshish and he went to Jopa um, to get on the boat, then to head to Tarshish. So anyway, Jopa is part of the, the Jonah story. So we have, a, we have a Jonah, I believe it's this green one. He goes to Jopa. Because he, he didn't want to go to Nineveh, and he went to Tarshish. But then Nineveh's over there. But on his way to Nineveh, there was a gourd plant, and there's a gourd in Arkansas. Like, the story of Jonah is a big deal. It's, that is a big deal because not only that, it's in the this whole eclipse is in the, the Pisces uh, constellation under Cetus, which is called the Whale. So I think the, the biggest biblical story to tie this with, it, it would be the, the book of Jonah, which is like four chapters long, such a short book. And But uh, oh, so many of the names of the Jonah story are all here. It's pretty perfect. Uh, all right. Mount Carmel in Ohio. Talked about that a couple times. That's there. Point number 83, the Georgia Guidestones. Remember that? Those Guidestones that uh, were destroyed pretty recently. I think they said by lightning. Uh, anyway, that was in the 2017 eclipse uh, pathway. I think it was destroyed, if memory serves me, you guys can correct me. Uh, was it last year? Was it 2022 that they were destroyed? I think it was last year, 2022, or even 23. But anyway, I think it's that silver, that silver peg there. Okay. And then... Uh, Come on now. Why so blurry? Okay. And then we've got a 13 Palestines in general. There are there are 13 locations called Palestine. Uh, and I didn't bother writing them all out, but I just wanted to note when I did a quick look at that, there are seven in, in, in this hot zone, in this in the central zone. There are seven Palestines in this hot zone. Um, on the on the path of 2024, so you guys know that there's a whole lot, lot of study there. Palestine and Israel, Palestine and Israel. They're they're trying to split the land. You guys are familiar with that, and uh, but it just so happens to be approximately seven Palestines in particular in the path of totality, more or less, or at least 90 percent or better, in the 2024 eclipse. So that's another interesting study. Point number 85. We have Justice, Kentucky. We're waiting for God to uh, show his justice, show his judgment. And is is this going to be it? Will justice be served? I don't know. Now, point number 86. We have um, a St. Mary's and Bethel. They're both in Alaska. Now, on this map, okay, so Alaska is actually over here. But since they couldn't fit it here, they put it over here. But anyway... It would have went through Bethel and St. Mary in the 2023 eclipse. So that's neat. You know, Mary 
you know, Mary uh, gave birth to Jesus in Bethlehem. So St. Mary in Bethel, Alaska. That is interesting. Point number 87, or no, point number 88, we have Conception Bay in Newfoundland. Conception Bay in Newfoundland. And so, again, that's one of these points. Right at the end of it all, Conception Bay, and we know that the, the rapture is, that sometimes the imagery is a is a birth. And um, Conception Bay, right at the very end, Newfoundland. Newfoundland is one of the islands in Canada, for those that don't know that. And then we've got Jericho in Kentucky. We've got Jericho in Kentucky. And... Um, I wrote time seven. I don't know why I wrote that, but maybe I wrote that because, um, well, we got Joshua, Texas, right? We got Joshua, Texas, and we have a Jericho, Kentucky, and they walk, they walk around Jericho seven times. And I believe on the seventh day, they walk seven times. There's a lot of sevens in the story of Jericho. And, um, so we got the Joshua and the Jericho, uh, story playing out here as well. We also have number point number 90. We have a Joseph, Utah, a Joseph, Utah. So that's the that's the 90 pins on this page. And then I got extra information that I will uh, share. And um, so if I if I if I can remember everything I said here to summarize the pins, we, we can use the Joseph story, the Joseph and Egypt st story. We can use the Jonah story to talk about this eclipse, which was a, a, a form of judgment. The Joseph story being a, um, well, I actually have other points too, but Pharaoh had two dreams, seven years of famine after the seven years of plenty. So we got the Jonah story, the Joseph story, the um, Joshua story, because we have Joshua and Jericho. And we have Aaron going to Little Egypt, talking to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's Lake. <laughs> there, we have the Salem's this way. We got the Nineveh's this way. It's really good. It's it's just you can tie in a lot of biblical stories. We got Mary giving birth to Jesus in Bethlehem, uh, in in that part of Alaska. You can really paint a lot of biblical pictures here. So. That's the pins. And then here are some random points. And um, that they're not really pins, but some more interesting things. And again, I mentioned this on my last live stream, but we're going to just go through it kind of really quickly again and add some more at the end. And we're, we're our timing is going great. We'll probably hammer it out in under an hour and get you all this information. And then we'll we'll break it down and go slower on another video. I wonder if I can open the blinds this time and because I don't really care about the pins this time. Let's do that. Oy, 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 oy. Okay, is that good? Can you see that? Let me just adjust the camera. Maybe I'll put it this way. See if I can get my points in here. Well, it's kind of shady, but uh, we'll try our best. We'll try our best here. Okay, so April 8th eclipse. Um, that's in Pisces CDs, like I mentioned. We have a number two. We got a devil's comment. Devil's comment and... Uh, or Comet, I should say. And that's 12P, 12P Ponds Brooks. We got an Aleph, which looks like a Phoenician Hebrew for, for the first letter in uh, the alphabet. We have um, Tav, which is the, if you use the middle Hebrew, um, you get you get the shape of a Tav right here. And so that's that. And here, let me adjust it a bit more. Maybe I can make it look better for everybody. Try my best to get. Uh, I thought that lighting was going to be good here, but it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. But oh well, we're here. We're doing it. Got to move on here. Oh, that's not too bad, but still not incredible. Okay, 
October 14th, 2023, we get the wedding ring in Virgo. Point number six, we get December 14th, 2020. That's when they rolled out the Vs for the um, um, the COVID stuff. And that eclipse was in Sagittarius, Ophicius, and Scorpius. I mentioned that in the other live stream. Point number seven, August 21st, 2017, we get the eclipse in Leo. Regulus looks like a sickle. Point number uh, eight is there is 1,211 days between December 14th, 2020 and August 21st, uh, 2017. And the same amount of days between December 11th to the April 8th. So uh, 12, 11, 12, 11. So there's an eclipse, eclipse, eclipse. So it's really outlining um, this the, the shape of these two eclipses. Point number nine, Salem is equivalent to saying peace. And, um, you know, was this the sign that there's going to be seven years of relative peace before seven years of judgment coming? I, I think it is. Point number 10, Nineveh represents judgment. Nineveh was eventually destroyed after they did repent. That's a whole other story, but uh, Nineveh, in this case, I think represents the judgment is coming. Seven years of famine ties ties to the Egypt story with Joseph. Point number 11, there are three intersections. So you can think of an X as a, as a six if you just add two plus four. And uh, there are three points of the conjunction. So you can almost think of this Aleph uh, as a six, six, six. We got number 12, we got Elon Musk and lots of, more than what I wrote here, but we got Disease X, we got Elon Musk with his X companies, we got all these other companies, SpaceX going to Mars, that kind of stuff. Point number 13, which I said before, and I'm just going kind of quickly and going fast because my other live stream, I said this, but I just wanted to, for any new viewer, I didn't want to miss anything. This is the Greek way of writing uh, Christ, and that first symbol is like an X, it looks like a top, and so um, that's the shape of this eclipse, and it's a uh, G5547, if you want to check that out. And Christians or Christianos, same kind of thing. Giant X, Tav, right there. G5546. Point number 15. On the, the random information here, we have Salem, which is equivalent to saying Shalom, which means peace be with you, which is uh, where the Shulamite kind of is derived from. And that's in Song of Solomon. And Song of Solomon is tied to a spring, early summer rapture idea. So this is another additional thing to that. Kind of relates to King Solomon too, who became king approximately 3,000 years from the potential second coming. Point number 16, Super Bowl 58 is on February 11th. Add 58 days to that. That almost gets you to the, the eclipse. Pretty cool. Point number 17, 40 days before this eclipse is February 28th. That'll be an interesting day to watch. And 40 days after the eclipse is around May 18th. May 19th, when they are saying that Pentecost is on the Torah calendar or the Hebrew calendar is when they would say that that is Pentecost. That is interesting. Point number 18, we have um, April uh, four, or October 14th plus 177 days. The Strong's number for 177 is Akatakaluptos, which means unveiled, uncovered. And uh, you can relate that to a bride wearing a veil. And and uh, we know that the October 14, 2024, they call it the wedding ring eclipse. It was at the time when, you know, spiritually the bride was engaged. And this is the time of unveiling the bride on, October, on April 8th. Don't know. No clue. Point number 19. Nineveh is the house or place of fish. Well, this eclipse is in the, the fish in uh, constellations. And wouldn't you know it, there's two noons in the word Nineveh, which noon does mean fish, among many other things. But we have a fish, fish, and we got a Pisces, which two fish constellations in the sky. That's pretty neat. That's like kind of perfect, in my opinion. Point number 20, Strong's G24 means indignation, and Strong's H24 means Abib, or it could be also noted as the month of Nissan. And uh, I don't want, don't go, uh, I'm trying to avoid getting into the Strong's too crazily, but you know, I still like my numbers. I still like the, the cool, simple uh, correlation. And so could God be saying that there will be anger, wrath, and indignation in the month of Nissan? Possibly. Point number 21, 
x equals the max usa population density okay so here are some new points somebody mentioned this in the comments so um population density most people in the states live in this area they live in 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 the, this area most of this is mountainous regions and there's not a high population over here and there's lots of people on the west coast but the majority of the usa lives right here so this would be a devastating thing not only in infrastructure but in population if there was an earthquake in a, in a form of judgment that would be the worst spot to hit for a massive earthquake of judgment so thank you to that person's comment point number two 22 pharaoh's dream it was um mentioned twice like he had two dreams once about the cows and then the second one was about the um was it the corn or the wheat it was either corn or wheat and so isn't that interesting he had two dreams he didn't really have to have two dreams so my thinking is was the first dream prophetic for him and was the second dream prophetic for us that's my question. Was the first dream prophetic for him and the second dream prophetic for us? I'm pretty sure that's in Genesis 39. That's another study on its side, but we can think about that. Point number 23, the red heifers came from Texas. And this 2024 uh, eclipse is going through Texas at the beginning. And I don't know where in Texas they came from. I also heard that they're going to be sacrificing the red heifers this April. I don't know if that's true, but that's another point to consider. Point number 24, we have two X's, a double, April 8th. Oh, yeah, Revelation 18, verse 6. <laughs> Repay her double. Okay, so, so 2024, the April 8th eclipse not only intersects over one, but it intersects over two eclipses within a seven-year window. This is extremely, extremely rare that that actually happens. I think uh, I somebody when somebody said something like um, eclipses only really only overlap each other every 300 years. So the odds of this eclipse overlapping two eclipses within a seven year period, I think, is um, extremely uh, rare. So it just reminded me of Revelation 18, 6, when it, when he's talking about the fall of Babylon. And it says repay her double. Well, we got a double intersection, a double X with this 2024 eclipse. But anyway, moving on, uh, point number 25. Indiana, their their state motto is the crossroads of America. The crossroads of America. That's their state motto when you drive into their town. And oh, my, the sun is really bright, but, well, there's the crossroads, isn't it? Look at the crossroads there. My goodness. I mean, we're, we're dealing with a real crossroad here. The crossroads of America. Point number 26, I kind of mentioned this earlier, that there is a massive cross here, bald knobs, and we get this other one, the the, uh, the soon return of Christ garden. I forget what it's called exactly, but big cross, big cross. If Jesus is the head of the Aleph, and that's the visual of uh, of what it would have looked like, just really interesting how this, this kind of mirrors what it would have looked like at the time of Christ's crucifixion. Really, I don't know. Interesting. You could refer to Luke for that one. Number 27, the scarlet letter. Um, yeah, this is something I need to research a little bit more, but it has something to do with, uh, I don't know if it's a novel or if this is a true story or something, but that was the symbol for adultery i guess and then she had to go stand in the town once a week and they had to point their finger at her at the woman and i don't know they put a giant a on her her, her shirt or her dress or they stamp somebody with an a i'm not quite sure but you know is this the symbol of adultery this giant a you know interesting interesting the scarlet letter connection there yeah and like i said earlier number 28 we have the scarlet, no, number 28, 77 feet, 7 inches, the empty cross, Kerrville, Texas. Well, again, this is all another potential confirmation of the seven years of tribulation that is coming. Uh, the seven years of gap between the first and the last eclipse, to be specific, six years, six months, 
six weeks, six days between the 2017 eclipse and the 2024 eclipse. But we got a bunch of sevens here in the measurement of this first cross in Texas. Really interesting, probably not a mistake. And point number 29, we have, um, sorry about the clarity, we have this person, T I Tipsy09 says, Little Egypt, Southern Illinois. Illinois was dubbed the abortion oasis of the USA. Abortion oasis of the USA. Abortion oasis of the USA. Little Egypt. Well, Little Egypt is Southern Illinois, right in the thick of it all. I don't really know all the legal reasons why that's called that, but that's really, really, really interesting. And if you go to um, Exodus 119, this, this is the irony of it all, okay? So Little Egypt is known as the abortion oasis of the USA. Okay, that's fine. In Exodus chapter 1, what did Pharaoh say? He said, go kill all the babies. Go kill all the firstborns. Like, because he wanted to decrease their population. Well, isn't that very interesting? And here's the third interesting thing on that is the word lively is H2422 in Exodus chapter 1, verse 19. That's how many days are between the 2017 eclipse and the 2024 eclipse. Hope you're tracking with me because this is kind of a big deal. Um, that word lively is the midwife said, hey, uh, we can't kill the kids because the moms are so lively that they give birth before we get there. And so isn't it funny that in the Bible, the Egyptians are basically trying to kill the babies. And the distance between the 2017 eclipse, the day gap between the 2017 eclipse and the 2024 eclipse is 2,422 days. And that's the one time that, that that word is used in the context of Egyptians trying to kill babies. Hope that kind of sinks in. That's that's a big one right there. I'll have to maybe mention that again in a smaller video so it stands out on its own. But yeah. And I obviously have to get better visuals here. This is silly how it's uh, getting really blurry. Point number 30, we're going to move on. The NASA symbol looks like a, a snake tongue. with It's like red. And it's it's really a shape of an A, but so this this really looks like the NASA symbol that that whole A thing, you know. So I don't know. That's another side thing. All right, I got five more points here to share. This is an interesting thing. Point number thirty-one. The moon overlaps Venus almost exactly twenty-four hours in the tail of Cetus um, on April seventh. Venus, the bright and morning star, you know, uh, I, I drew, you know, he drew a, a third of the stars from heaven with his tail. That's in Revelation 12. Well, Venus and the moon are in the tail of Cetus on April 7th. It looks, if you look at it, I, again, I'll have to show it on another video. If you look at Venus and moon, there's a kind of like almost a perfect conjunction on April 7th, right around 1300 UTC time. And then the following day, around the same time, almost 24 hours later, that's when the perfect um, conjunction is is of the um, of the eclipse that we're talking about, in perfect alignment with Pisces. I mean, you you can't even get any perfect how perfect the <laughs> eclipse is, the moon and the sun in that first fish. Really excellent. All right, point number 23. Like I said, I don't. I don't want to go too nuts with my numbers. I don't want to get too nuts with the with the math and the in, in the gematria and all this kind of stuff. But I do like the simplicity of things when you see it. So the Strong's number for Jesus in the New Testament is G2424. Well, we're in 2024. So I think that's really fitting that the Strong's number for Jesus is G2424. And the strong number for living in the Old Testament is H2424. H meaning Hebrew, G meaning Greek. Uh, living. So, you know, will we be living with Jesus in 24 eternally? I don't know. 
I don't know, but I think it's neat. I think it's worth mentioning that again, the strongest number for Jesus is G2424, and the strongest number for living is H2424. Point number 34. Yeah, just to remind you, if this wasn't enough, this eclipse is basically stating the, the first day of the Hebrew calendar, uh, depending on how you look at everything but april 8th or 9th is nissan one i mean that that's perfect i mean if, if i'm god and i'm trying to send people a message i would do something dramatic like this on the first day of the hebrew calendar i, I mean i don't know it's really fits real perfect point number 35 and the last of my 125 things i wanted to say on this video was um nebuchadnezzar turns into an oxen he turns into a um, uh, the, or, or the shape of an oxen, and and then it says he's got feathers like an eagle. The reference there is Daniel four twenty eight through thirty three, yeah, when he's got so much pride, and then he turns into that for seven years. So the eagle reminds me of the states, you know, because eagle is the symbol of the states, the USA. But oxen, well, the symbol for an aleph, the early pictograph for an aleph was the head of an oxen. So Daniel 4 is kind of connecting the Aleph with the eagle. Daniel 4 is kind of connecting the Aleph with the eagle for seven years. Well, we have the Aleph over the eagle when it comes to this picture here in the States. Sorry about the lighting. I'm going to maybe just change it again and try and uh, get it out of the, the bright sun because that's not going to work for us. There you go. That's pretty good. So let me just get the verse. I wanted to show you that in the book of Daniel. And uh, so where does it say eagle? Nebuchadnezzar turns into, okay. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, so like an aleph, because the symbol for um, an aleph is the head of an oxen. And seven times shall pass over you. You, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. That very hour, the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen, like an aleph. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs had grown like eagles, feathers, and his nails like bird claws. So we got an eagle and we got an oxen. Well, we kind of like got, we got an aleph over an eagle and seven. So, so to summarize my 125 points, it looks like we're right at the one hour mark. Really perfect. We got all these biblical stories tied into this, uh, this sign, this, this clear sign. And, uh, the symbol for a sign is an aleph. The Hebrew word is an aleph and a vav and a tav. Well, we got an aleph and we got a tav and this is a sign. No sign except the sign of Jonah. Well, there is the sign of Jonah right here. And seven years of uh, plenty and seven years of famine. I mean, it makes sense right here. It, it's all here. It looks like it. And we got seven Palestines in here. We got seven Ninevehs in here. We got seven Salems in here. We got we got little Egypt in here. We got Aaron coming to Egypt. We got the Pharaoh. We got the Jonah. We got the Jopa. We got the Nineveh. We got the Joshua. We got the Jericho. What else do you want? What else do you want for a warning? We got it happen on Nissan one. I don't know. There's just so many ways about this. This is this is a fun one, man. This is fun. So I don't know when our father is going to pull the trigger. I don't know when he's going to say, Jesus, go get your bride. I don't know. I hope it's soon. I hope it's real soon. But undoubtedly, this is a sign. And even if we're here beyond this, we're we're going to look back at this, this sign and reference it you know this is certainly at the very least a benchmark but it could be the reason we get out of here it could be the reason why we got to go before this i don't know either way i have a relationship with jesus i accept his full sacrifice on the cross for my sins i'm a sinner in need of a savior jesus died for a reason and every one of us has a reason again jesus died for a reason 
and you have a reason. We, we are all guilty. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. So I ask, please, again, hopefully there's been enough evidence on this video to stir your heart to say, you know what? What if Aaron has, you know, figured this out? Not, not, not that I think I figured anything out, but what if there's enough evidence in here to believe that Jesus could be coming today? Oh, how do I get right with Christ? How do I figure this out? How do I get in to the book of life, so to speak, you know? Um, start asking Jesus questions. Pray. Seek God. Drop on your knees. Ask questions. Google things. Read your Bible, you know? Start start with the spirit of, Jesus, I want to know you. I want to know your story. I want to know. And he will show you. I guarantee you it. He wants to show you. So um, if you have questions and you want to talk to somebody, my Discord app is has turned into this an incredible ministry. It's just wonderful, smart, biblically sound people that are even smarter than me, and that know so much, and they can ask, and we can talk about so many different things. Uh, my goal here on YouTube is to warn that judgment is coming, and to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Um, been dedicated to this for three and a half years. My life is not important. What what I drive, where I live, what I eat, that's all secondary secondary to what God has uh, in store for us for eternity. And so I pray that you treasure up uh, your life in heaven. You put your, your mind on heavenly things. And I pray that you first and foremost uh, believe in the finished work uh, uh, on the cross. And, and secondly, once you've done that, go out and start uh, spreading the gospel, and once you become a believer, um, start acting like you're a believer. Start acting like you are uh, a child of God, and start start to understand what the fruits of the Spirit are: love, joy, peace, uh, self control, etc. Start to represent Christ in the best way you know how, and do that because you're thankful for what He already did on the cross for your sins. So, um, yeah, I love you guys very much, and I hope to see you in the clouds very soon. Uh, Either way, we're going to keep on building that boat because soon it's going to float. And you want to be on top of the boat, not under the boat, when Jesus comes. All right, folks. So, again, if you have more pins to share with me, please do leave it in the comment section. I'll add more. But I think uh, what we're going to do soon now is we're going to get into some of these pins and break it down and do shorter videos so that it's a bit more you know, organized and on point and, and connect the, the themes together because uh, I've had pins and lists and there's a, it's just not as compact and as nice as, as, as I'd like it to be, but, but this is a good one for now. Okay. Love you guys. And we'll talk very soon and go Jesus go.